Welcome back, sports fans. Okay, today we're going to talk about how the sports media helped LeBron James steal an MVP. Two MVPs. How? <laughs> Boy, this is so cold. The sports media helped LeBron steal two MVPs. And trust me, this was about getting as far as he could away from Kobe, okay? If he couldn't catch him in championships, they knew these MVPs would be the ticket, right? Because if they take him away from Kobe and give him to LeBron, then guess what? They can always use that against LeBron, I mean against Kobe. So first, let's talk about LeBron leaving and going to Miami. And at the time, playing with two top 10 players in the league, Bosch and Wade, right? Right? Two top 10 players in the league. So on one team in Miami, you had three top 10 players. Could you imagine? Wow. Could you imagine Jordan after getting beat by the Pistons for the third time in 1990, leaving his home and going to play with Charles Barkley and Akeem Olajuwon? This is pretty much what it was, right? <laughs> Even though at the time we do know that Kobe was the best player still in the league because he had just won back-to-back -back championships beating the teams that LeBron got beat by. So it's not even like, you know, it wasn't LeBron's fault why they lost in 09 and 2010. Both seasons, he was the MVP. And we'll look at it because we can say that was more respectable. Some people have Kobe being an MVP in at least one of those years. It's all judgment. But we know LeBron was not the MVP in 2012 and 2013. And we're going to show you why. So that that's what it would be like Jordan leaving and going play with going to play with Barkley and Akeem Olajuwon because he couldn't beat the Pistons. But Jordan knew it wasn't his fault why he kept losing, right? <laughs> so he just needed to get his teammates better. In neither of those seasons that he lost to the Pistons did he have the best record in the league, right? One of those seasons he did win the MVP. But he did not have the best record in the league. He's never lost. And he's always won championships when he had the best record in the NBA, right? So you can't say the same for LeBron James. So we got to disqualify LeBron from being in the GOAT debate right then and there, right? When he left his home and he went to go play with Bosh and Wade. And then we had... um. Ray Allen, who was a top 75 player, he came in 2013, and LeBron won another MVP. Back-to-back -back MVPs. Wow. Okay, and those teams were loaded. It just wasn't, you know, a, a couple of players, Hall of Fame players. Those teams were loaded with players from other teams that were sharpshooters um, and, and great guys like that. Remember, LeBron, he can't develop players. OK, he, he needs people to, you know, do what he can't do. Right. LeBron can't shoot. And <laughs> Steph Mar Marbury said that. I said, how, how are you going to teach little kids how to play basketball when the guy cannot shoot? LeBron can't shoot. Right. LeBron can't shoot. So <laughs> that's already been proven. So let's get into this. You know, <clears throat> no way he gets back to back MVPs. <clears throat> In Miami after playing with these guys he's disqualified from getting an MVP right because we always thought they told us MVP isn't who has the best stats right or Jordan would have won about three of them in the 80s right it's not about who has the best stats it's about who was the most valuable player to to their team right Right. That's why they said Kobe couldn't win those MVPs. Right. Because they pulled out Nash back to back. Right. They said Nash was more valuable to his team. So before we get into this, these numbers, do you really think LeBron with a super team was more valuable to his team playing with two top 10 players in the league at that time and another 
top 75 player of all time, Ray Allen, do you think he was most valuable to his team in the NBA in 12 and 13? Get out of here. You could never be most valuable to, to, to a team like that, right? So 2009, his MVP season, he won. He had the most um, wins in the league. Right? He won the most games in the league. Respectable. Okay? Most valuable player to his team. 28 points per game, 7 rebounds, 7 assists, 1.7 steals, 1.1 blocks. That's a lot for LeBron James. Okay? When you say one block, go look at his <laughs> stats throughout his career. When you get up to one block for LeBron, I think... This is the most he ever averaged was one block, 1.1 block a game. Jordan averaged more than that in a season. In back-to-back -back seasons, matter of fact. Um, three turnovers a game. Total points, 2,304. Total blocks, 93. Ne never had a 100-block season. It, it, it's just incredible. Total steals. 137 steals, never had a 200 steal season. This is the greatest all around player. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. So this is this is respectable, right? 2010, the next season had the best record in the league, right? Eight assists a game. Seven rebounds a game, 1.6 steals, one block, 3.4 turnovers, total points, uh, 2,258, total blocks, 77, um, total steals, 125. So, in 09, when he won the MVP, he played 81 games, right? I think that's the most he ever played. 2010 76 games so this i mean this is totally respectable a lot of people say uh no what i had a problem with was the rebounds right the rebounds seven rebounds for a guy that's six nine that's not good right that's not good you should at least have 10 rebounds okay so Let's go to Miami. This guy goes to Miami his first year. I think he only averaged, if I'm not wrong, I want to say 24, 25 points a game in his first year. Um, so, of course, his points is going to go down because he's got all these great players. So, 2012, when he won the MVP, well, let's go back up real quick. In 2000, let, let's go to notable teammates in 2009. He had Mo Williams, an all-star. Um, he had Ben Wallace, a Hall of Famer. And he had um, the Big Z, El Gauskas, who was an all-star the year before LeBron came. And an all-star LeBron's second season. As LeBron, too, was an all-star, too, that same season. But nobody says nothing about that. And they both missed the playoffs. <laughs> LeBron's second season, him and El Gauskas were all-star teammates and missed the playoffs because the media doesn't tell you LeBron choked down 19 of 31 games after the all-star break, right? So 2010, he had Antoine Jameson, Shaquille O'Neal, and he had Mo Williams. Now, we're not going to say it was the Shaq of old. He did have Shaq. He did have Antoine Jamison, and he had Mo, Will Mo Williams again, who was an all-star the year before. And we all know what happened in those back-to-back -back seasons. He choked it up, pooped his pants. If you want to go check out them videos, I got them out. <laughs> it's elementary. They clogged the lane, and they dared the guy to shoot. And he pooped his pants. And he lost to the third and fourth seed, right, in the Western Conference Finals in the playoffs. I don't want to hear nothing about Boston, who won the conference only one time, and they were together like five, six years, and LeBron is winning MVP over Pierce and Garnett, right? 
and Ray Allen, right? And having a better record than these guys, right? And won the conference more than these guys, right? As a Cavalier. And that's all they could get was a fourth seed in 2010? And LeBron choked it down to a four, choked it, choked down to a four seed. So, 2012 MVP season, right? So to me, if you're gonna be an MVP, right? And in 2012, you gotta be better than what you was in 2009 and 2010 because now you got a super team, right? <laughs> Three top 10 players on one team. Wow. Again, that would be like Michael Jordan going to play with Hakeem Olajuwon and Charles Barkley after he lost in 1990 to the Pistons, right? But Jordan didn't do that because it wasn't his fault. They were losing. But it was LeBron's fault why they were losing. And he left because he knew he had to have people to make up for his shortcomings. So let's look at this. 2012 MVP season, 62 games. What? Homie played 62 games. What? 27 points per game, 6 assists, 7 rebounds, 1.9 steals, 0.8 blocks, 3.4 turnovers, total points, 1,683, total blocks, 50. Total steals, 115. This guy won the MVP off of this? What? Like I said, if you're going to go play with these guys, you're going to have to be putting up like 35 points per game, 10 assists, 10 rebounds, and, and the rest is history. Especially if you're only playing 62 games. Wow. 2013 MVP season. Now he's got Ray Allen, right? The guy who saved his legacy this same year? Hmm. Well, I, I, I just don't know. Why would you go get Ray Allen? And people would be like, maybe a LeBron fan, why would you go get Dennis Rodman? Well, they didn't the Jordan didn't need a another score, right? He didn't need a sharpshooter, right? He needed a guy who could rebound. And you already had sharpshooters, right? On your team. So he goes and gets and you gotta remember, Ray Allen was a franchise player of another team at one time Chris Bosch franchise player top five pick with LeBron franchise player of Toronto Wade franchise player of the Heat wow so <laughs> when did Jordan ever play with the number one franchise player from another team when? When? A franchise, a number one franchise player of another team. When? Because LeBron did it all his career. Kyrie, Kevin Love, AD, um, Howard, Melo, all these guys. Right? Wade, Bosch. He doesn't just go and get a rebounder or something like that. Well, he tried that, right? He, he tried with Ben Wallace, even though... <laughs> He was a number one franchise player. To me, he was. He's a Hall of Famer in Detroit. It didn't work out with them. Because when they put the ball in LeBron's hands, he's going to break it up. Down the stretch. He's not a shooter. He's a driver. So, right. 2013 MVP season. 26 points per game. 7 rebounds. 8 or no, seven assists, eight rebounds, 1.7 steals, 0.9 blocks, three turnovers, total points, 2,036. Total blocks, 67, just horrendous. 
Um, total steals, 127, plays 76 games. You're, you're trying to tell me <laughs> this deserved an MVP? Where? So no season he had, the two seasons, MVP seasons in Miami, they was not better than the two MVP seasons <clears throat> in Cleveland, right? In Cleveland, he had two great MVP seasons, and he wasn't playing on the super team, right? So what would warrant this guy getting two more MVPs if he couldn't put up better numbers with more help than in Cleveland? What what? Why would he get two more MVPs in Miami? So let's look at these notable names that he played with in Miami, right? Let's check it out. 2012, we all know a couple of these people, and we mentioned them, but we're going to say them again. Ray Allen, Hall of Famer. Shane Battier, Defensive Specialist. Chris, ba Chris Bosh, Hall of Famer. Mario Chalmers. Um, Richard Lewis, a, a guy who beat him in the final. I mean, in the um, <laughs> what was it, two thousand and nine? Wow. In the Wayne Wade, two thousand thirteen. You got Ray Allen, Shane Battier again, Chris Bosh again. You got Richard Lewis, Mario Chalmers again, and you got Dwayne Wade. What a team. Could you imagine if Kobe had this team? <laughs> Could you imagine Kobe getting this team right here? And he was still able to beat the teams that beat LeBron. No way if you gave Kobe this same team. We really will be talking about not five, not six, not seven, not eight. This is real deal. Right? Because Kobe is going to come with the work ethic. And he ain't going to play no games. You got this Miami team right here. They're not going to practice. They only had the best record in the league one time. Can you? <laughs> so. If you're on a LeBron team, and it's been known, you are playing based on athleticism and skills. It ain't going to be about fundamentals. It's not going to be about X's and O's or nothing like that. It's going to be based on athleticism, right? Kobe is like Jordan. He's going to have these guys practicing, and they're going to hate practice. And they're going to play defense. Kobe probably would have won six championships with this team right here. And LeBron could only get two championships. And he got two MVPs. For having lesser seasons than what he did in Cleveland. You can't take the NBA, Stephen A. Smith... Shannon Sharp, Nick Wright, none of these people, ESP, you can't take these people serious. This guy did not deserve these MVPs in Miami. It's no hate, but he was playing on a super team. Like I said, unless he was going to be putting up gaudy numbers, which he didn't, he didn't even put up better numbers than when he was in Cleveland. So you guys tell me what you think. This is an embarrassment to the NBA, and if he gets caught with steroids, they're going to take these MVPs away. We already know this, and they're going to take a lot away. And I don't want to hear nothing about ESPN saying, oh, we didn't know. We've been talking about this for a long time. So tell me what you think.